Q1057 and 1035, the Capital Region's classic rock station. I am Hyde, and I'm a big fan of Trans-Siberian Orchestra, as I know you are. I mean, they're coming back to MVP Arena here in Albany on the 29th of November. Looking like a good show there. Christmas Eve and other stories and TSO's greatest hits. How cool is that? Now, I remember seeing TSO back in the day, like this is 2001, playing the Oakdale Theater in, uh, in Wallingford, Connecticut. Now, when you think about that, I said theater. And you think of TSO, that's an arena band with fire and hydraulics and all that. Well, back then, it wasn't quite the same as it is now. It just keeps growing and growing. And I, I got to ask you, Jeff Plate, founding member of Trans-Siberian Orchestra, one hell of an amazing drummer. How does it feel to see this thing just keep going and getting bigger and bigger? It's amazing. It really is. You know, when Paul O'Neill first started the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, he had some very interesting ideas musically and obviously the first couple CDs that we did Christmas Eve and other stories in the Christmas Attic were, were huge hits the next step in this whole thing was taking the band live how was this going to work so when we first started it was one box truck and a couple dozen lights and a fog machine and Paul came from the school of big arena rock he loved Queen and The Who, and Pink Floyd. He loved production, but he also loved Broadway and theater. So he had designs on including all of these elements into the TSO show. And and honestly, when we started out, it was pretty small. It was a very humble production package. Paul just insisted every year on, on stepping up the game and making the show bigger and better. And, and as you mentioned, the first several years were in theaters. So the production was what it was at the time, you know, it was probably about as much as we could fit into the theater and, and what Paul could afford because he was working with this whole thing was no cheap ticket. But as this thing exploded in about 2005 and we moved into arenas, Paul took the opportunity to make the show just as big and bright and bold as he possibly could. And this is why all these years later, TSO is still growing today. I've had the fortune of sitting in the middle of this and watching it grow in, in front of me, left to right, above, behind. It's just just been an amazing run that we've been on here, and there seems to be no one in sight. It's, it's truly incredible. You know, you bring that up, that uh, you have the best seat in the house because you get to see everything happening in front of you, not just the band, but the crowd. And you've probably seen changes. People who were young kids when they were coming to this now showing up as adults, maybe bringing their kids because, I mean, this thing has been going for a while. So I got to ask you, when you are sitting there, is there a favorite part in the show, whether it's the crowd or the band, that you just go, you know what? This is the greatest job in the world. (laughs) So I get asked a lot, you know, what's your favorite song in the show? Christmas Eve, Sarajevo is the biggest song of the show. It is the oldest song of the show, but still the driving force of what we do. It is easy for me to pick out the people who have never seen us before, because the look on their face is a a little bit of confusion, a little bit of wonderment. You know, their heads are going left to right and looking around, like, what the heck is going on here? And by the time we get to Christmas Eve, Sarajevo, that song starts. People recognize the song. You see their faces light up, and they get just so completely engaged in what we're doing. From that moment on, everybody in the room, we've got them. You know, even if even if people have never heard a note of what we're doing before, once we get through with Christmas Eve, Sarajevo, everybody in the room is. You know, we've got new fans, we've got old fans, but everybody's on the same page at that point. And that truly is just the point of magic in every show. And I can't wait to see everyone coming together at the MVP Arena in Albany on the 29th for that moment and all the moments of the great Trans-Siberian Orchestra show. Tickets are still on sale now. Uh, Going fast, though, so I recommend getting them as quick as you can. Now, looking at the show, year after year, it does seem to be getting bigger. How do you manage to keep topping yourselves with this show every year? Well, for myself and the the musicians and singers on stage, you know, it's a matter of us staying in shape, keeping our chops up and doing our job. The presentation falls on the management team and the production team. And these guys really come up with something cool and new and different every year. You know, the show looks different every year. And for people that have seen us, you know what TSO looks like. But there's always a different element, a different production gag, a different lighting scheme. There's always something very, very cool that gets incorporated into the show and 
Hey, man, I tell you, we, when we go to rehearsals, one of the biggest thrills for me is seeing the stage when it's finally built. Because it's always, I walk in the room and look at, look at it and go, oh, wow, this is cooler than last year. <laughs> and I say that every year. So these guys are, are the best of the best. They know exactly what they're doing. And in the tradition of Paul O'Neill, you know, keeping his legacy going strong, Paul insisted on a different show year after year. And... And we've stuck to that, and, and this group of people really know what they're doing, and, and they deliver. So now if you're talking about rehearsal, how much rehearsal does go into this? Does it start with just the band kind of getting together and working things out, and then you get to show up for a full dress rehearsal? What is this process like? The band starts rehearsing in in a separate area than the main stage, and we start getting the music together. Granted, a lot of us have been here for a long time. Myself and a couple of others, Al Petrelli, Chris Caffrey, Johnny Middleton, we, we've been here from the beginning. So we have played all of this music a number of times. There's Every once in a while, there's a brand new piece that we put together. But for the most part, we get together and brush the dust off, and we're ready to go. So the big part of the rehearsals is getting on the main stage and working with the production, which obviously, if you've seen our show, there's a lot of stuff going on. My my benefit in all of this is I get to sit in one position all the time, so I don't have to worry about a lot of that. But a lot of my guys down front, the guitarists, the singers, everybody needs to know their cue. They need to know exactly where they're standing at any given time of the show, and there's a lot that goes into that. But when we roll out of rehearsals and run into that first show, we are tour ready. The first show is equally as good as the last show, and we take a lot of pride now, but we put a lot of time into it too. Now, going back to when I first saw this in 2001, I remember I was I took my mother because she'd heard the song on the radio. She liked it. And she was always encouraging of my of my rock and roll leaning. So I'm sitting there in my Sabotage Poets and Mad Men shirt on that tour because that was the <laughs> current tour that had happened at the time. And I realized I'm showing up and I am seeing grandmothers with with grandkids. I'm seeing this whole mix of people. I'm like, OK, this is unlike any rock show I've ever been to. And seeing that in 2001 and then, like I said, every year when I go again, seeing more and more mix of people coming together with the music. You've got generations coming out. You are a part of family's Christmas traditions, not unlike It's a Wonderful Life or listening to Bing Crosby. What's it like to be a part of something like this that you know is going to live on long after you decide, you know what, I just don't feel like playing this anymore? You know, it's interesting. Paul O'Neill would tell us over and over that this was going to outlast us all. This is going to get passed on from generation to generation, and this is, you know, timeless. You know, these were all very encouraging words, and I, you know, we all understood his excitement about it. But the man knew what he was talking about, and this is exactly that. It's going to be on the airwaves and in people's homes every holiday from now till whenever. Tradition. We've become tradition for millions of people, and this is something that we all realize we do not take this lightly because we know how important this is. This centers around Paul's music, obviously, and his lyrics, but the stories that he wrote around these albums, I feel, have always been the thing that really connected with people. And to your point about the diversity in the audiences, the very first show that we did in Philadelphia in 1999 I mean, we walked out on a stage and you know where we came from. You know, we're a bunch of rock guys walking out there in tuxedos. And there is a couple in the front row. The man's wearing a tuxedo. The woman's got this beautiful dress on. The fog is rolling into their laps. And we're looking at each other like, oh, my God, what do we get ourselves into? They absolutely loved it. But there were people in the audience with rock and roll shirts, Sabotage shirts, Metallica shirts. And then next to them was a family husband and wife with their kids. It really was one of the strangest feelings at first, but everybody in the room loved the show. And when we got done with that first show, we all realized, wow, this is going to work. And lo and behold, here it is, 2023, and this tour just gets bigger and better every year. Absolutely. It's not to be missed. Again, at the 29th at the MVP Arena in Albany, tickets going fast. TSO, Christmas Eve, and other stories and the greatest hits. Looking forward to this show as I do every year. Jeff, anything else you'd like to tell the people of Albany as they're getting ready to see this great spectacular? Hey, thank you all for the support. And we could not do this without you. I know it sounds cliche, but it is so true. If you've never seen our show before, please come check us out. There is something in this show for everybody, and I guarantee it will be one of the most unique and rewarding shows you're probably ever going to see.
Thanks so much, Jeff. Again, trans Siberian Orchestra, that is the drummer. The man who's been there since the very beginning, Jeff Plate. He's got the best seat in the house. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't check out your seat on the 29th in Albany. Yes, at the MVP Arena. Tickets going fast. Do not miss Trans-Siberian Orchestra. It is a show. It is a spectacle. It is just a great night of holiday tradition and fun. Bring everybody out. It is a family affair.